So, around the time that the Paris Olympics were going on, we had my videos going up of sort of Kaigen and of, well, um, just talking about Lost Media, a video that ended up becoming shockingly way more um, topical than I anticipated at the time because it ended up dropping the Wednesday after the closure of Game Informer, and with it, Game Informer mag, uh, Game Informer's owners, GameStop yanking access basically from uh, official access from the website's um, the archive of all of the articles and videos and stuff that are on the website itself that effectively rendering it lost media dependent on internet archive and people who have done previous scraping to have those available. Uh, and then following that was the episodes of, um, well, uh, Breaking Down the Nightfall Saga and of Nintendo Power Perspective. So when it comes time to talk, giving thoughts about Olympic stuff, I didn't leave a window until, well, a month after the start of September. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about Olympic sports and not, not, not just the main ones, though we are, the main ones do actually matter for purposes of this discussion. Because I'm thinking here about skateboarding. This is this year's Olympics. Paris Olympics was the second year that skateboarding was a officially an Olympic sport. And I was thinking here the importance of the Olympics in terms of giving legitimacy to sports that are otherwise considered somewhat relatively fringe. We consider track and field. We consider um, wrestling, Greek Roman wrestling. We consider judo and taekwondo, all these things, legitimate valid sports, even though they don't have professional circuits around them with regular television coverage like we see with, for example, well, soccer or soft or baseball, to some degree softball, um, or other similar sports. We have, they have within the United States, the level of legitimacy to get local governments to when they build parks and that sort of thing to say, okay, we will make sure to set space aside for a tennis court or for um, a baseball diamond or for um, that sort of thing for other outdoor sports that basically existed there in the Olympics. This is why high schools and colleges will have make sure that they have track and field programs um, because they are recognized as significant and legitimate sports, even if they aren't necessarily programs that will, once you get out of high school, once you get out of college, have a mechanism for you to do them professionally in the same way that theoretically someone can aspire to play in the NBA or major in baseball or the NFL or in one of the myriad world uh, soccer leagues, uh, the professional soccer clubs, that sort of thing. So, when a sport gets added, and particularly something from a subculture which is not, which it considers it in the same regard that the art establishment in the past is considered low art, like comics or fantasy art or science fantasy and science speculative fiction art or that sort of thing, it changes the dynamic in terms of the discussion around these sports in the popular consciousness and gives the people who do those sports a opportunity basically to get a level of support that they could not have gotten in, in the past, especially if what they were getting in the past was the opposite of support, was something like, oh, not getting, like, use a classic example of why I'm bringing up skateboarding. I have seen since I was a teenager multiple stickers across the Heartland metro area with the, well, with the words skateboarding is not a crime on them. Done as to a certain degree, well, a relative act of protest over, well, the fact that skateboarding gets treated as a crime. That people who do skateboarding, whether, they do, whether they're doing tricks or not, whether they're skateboarding to get around, get treated as criminals, get chased off by uh, security guards, maybe even get just arrested, like straight hassled and arrested or ticketed on site 
um, if their skateboard touch the, touches the ground, depending on whatever part of the United States they're in, that sort of thing. And this has caused difficulty for getting things like, for example, skate parks built for people to engage in skateboarding as a sport to learn and develop their skills or to skateboard to do tricks for recreation, what have you, in various municipalities and communities. But now skateboarding has been not just an Olympic sport at one Olympics, but two. And near as I can tell, is still going to be in the Los Angeles Olympics as well. That's when Summer Olympics is the next one, which puts it at three Olympics. And once you hit three Olympic Games in a row, that gives you a degree of, of inertia that you wouldn't necessarily have with one game. So that's why we'll get to break dancing in a minute. But like this helped break through a lot of barriers for in the past for snowboarding on um, ski slopes and that sort of thing, which prohibited um, the people from doing snowboarding at all to now opening them up where snowboarders and skate snowboarders and skiers have to share the slopes. There are still plenty of some ski, uh, snowboard, not snowboard, plenty of ski resorts and ski slopes where uh, snowboarding is expressly prohibited, but it's, those are not, those have gone from being the majority to the minority. And what helped break through that is not just the X Games having snowboarding as the winter X Games having snowboarding as an event, but the Olympics as well. With that in mind, I, I bring this up because a while back, possibly like a decade ago, maybe, um, I was involved in an attempt to get our skate park in my local community rehabilitated. Um, what had come into pass was a member of the local Chamber of Commerce had written a letter to the editor, um, basically effectively brashing skateboarders conceptually as a whole because of her negative perception of her grandson. Um, woman in question had, would later go on to be pressured to resign from the Chamber of Commerce and the local, um, one of the local um, fraternal organizations, not fraternal, but um, yeah, fraternal organizations. Uh, like, it wasn't the Odd Fellows, but it didn't, um, Shriners, I think it was the local, local Shriners group, um, because she then went to uh, we'll go full mask off racist, spectacularly so, in um, like on a podcast, and in and then they doubled down on it and some other stuff that in our other communications, and the entities in question they said they no you we we can't we can't work with you anymore. But in any case, rewinding a bit, I had um, I responded basically saying, hey, skateboarding is significantly a bigger thing than you think. And is at the time, like, well, it was not an Olympic sport yet. I believe it had been announced for the Tokyo Olympic Games. So I did bring that up, but also bringing up like, hey, there's a the X Games, the Dew Tour as major uh, sporting events. And that encompass skateboarding. And that it's a legit... A, trying to play up the legitimacy of it. And this got led to me getting, to a degree, roped in for a little bit with a efforts to get the skate park rehabilitated. With varying degrees of ultimately failure. Um, we didn't get what we were trying to get. And so... Cut to the pandemic. And in particular, the pandemic after the Olympic Games. And now, the local municipality rehabilitates the skate park. Some of this, sorry, I'm dealing with some stuff on my display. Um, some of this is related to undoubtedly having gotten pen additional grants and that sort of thing from the pandemic. 
uh, from the federal government and that sort of thing. But uh, that's not, I think, all of it. I think having skateboarding as an actual Olympic sport helped tremendously. It helped get, like, once we had the Olympics and people seeing it, said, yeah, well, this is actually an Olympic sport. It's going to be in the next Olympics. And it's a sport that people took seriously, that you, that had tremendous demonstration of athletic ability and creative ability by the participants. And, and to a degree, also one where the U.S. had an okay showing, like we weren't like dominating the podium like we do in lots of other sports, but we like we had a showing, we had we we got a medal, but we didn't do as well as certainly when we talk about people holding having an exceptional degree of nationalistic pride over the Olympics that people wanted or expected. So, with that, uh, now we have. The um, our um, next Olympic Games and U.S. did better, um, and we have to talk about well, what does this mean in terms of for skateboarding as an event, an event, and by or rather say skateboarding as a sport, because. What I think this does by having this these two year these two Olympics worth of showing is hopefully this will, to an extent, build a better degree of, for lack of a better term, um, of of a body of work that can be used when you're trying to get a city to provide a skate park, to, and to relax rules about say riding your skateboard to and from that skate park as opposed to oh you can only walk within the bounds of the skate park right within the bounds of the skate park this is a thing some municipalities have done uh, a couple of the suburbs around here tried to do similar rules where you could be ticketed i actually think when the skate park first got built um there was like some um in, in my town there was some rumblings about hey you can ride your skateboard in the skate park but if you are ride your skateboard to and from the skate park, they'll ticket you. Which people were not happy about because that's bullshit. Uh, but now we've had two Olympic Games, so eight years, where skateboarding has gone from an underground thing, one with to one which has a international sporting event focused on that skate on skateboarding with the X Games, but also in that context, it is still not the Olympics, and while it sometimes gets national television attention, it's not as, like, it is more frequently a realm of, like, ESPN2, where not, so it doesn't have the same wide stream, um, widestream, mainstream, wider population visibility that the Olympic Games has. Now, we've had it in the Olympics enough times for people to be accustomed to it, and also, one of the things that figured was important and significant and helpful is something that came up repeatedly during the Olympic coverage in terms of like rites of passage and important significant feats is for like the street event talking about um people doing skateboarding and like rail grads and that sort of tricks outside of parks as being a vital and important thing to developing as an Olympic skateboarder, mentioning doing a rail grind at um, the Victor Stairs and Hollywood and Vine. Um, and like, or like, like well, Hollywood Vine also Hollywood, said at Hollywood Boulevard, like in, but in California at a location that wasn't, you know, an actual um, skate park, and with it, as part of that, um, by major saying, hey, skateboarding outside of a park in environments which in the past were considered illegal and a menace and a threat to society and the kind of things where, you'd where you would have cops and security guards harassing, ticketing, or even arresting people, um, 
that's a big deal that that's communicated that hey this is thing that matters in this way so will this hopefully be the landmark thing that gets more skate parks built and existing like weaker skate or small fry skate parks expanded to have to better represent the disciplines i can hope i can hope i'm someone who i'm really i'm someone who never really skateboarded well i never had the sense of the equilibrium to hold up well on the skateboard in terms of stay upright but i've appreciated what others have been able to do from afar and been pleased to see skateboarding take each progressive step towards something that is acceptable for people to do something that won't get, get won't don't get doesn't get people getting harassed and i hope that in the future we will get You don't have to put the skateboarding is not a crime, or perhaps now skateboarding, uh, skateboarding going from skateboarding is not a crime exclamation point to skateboarding is not a crime, comma, it's an Olympic sport exclamation point on um, stickers going from that to everyone is accepting that and hey maybe we're not going to put those bumps on um, staircase railings because we're trying to actively jerk around skateboarders because older people who um or just just more conservative frank often um people who don't like skateboarding um want to discourage their presence in public places or that sort of thing we will see how this goes that said i do feel bad for people who were hoping for a similar transition for um breakdancing for breaking because um what helps skateboarding is the fact that in the tokyo olympics people put in really good shows nobody like whereas with the possibly the only year now of breakdancing breaking at the olympic games what has dominated the discussion of it as a sport isn't how well the gold medalists did haven't been the routine of the gold medalists or the silver medalists, or anyone who made the podium or the finalists, but rather the Australian performer who just absolutely blew it. And like with the Olympic Games, I do appreciate that like, you do see these performers at the top of their game who do kind of just flub because in a way it demonstrates how truly difficult skateboarding is as a sport and provides a degree of encouragement to people who are learning the skateboard that hey yes i bailed while doing by trying to do like an ollie but bailing is as much a part of skateboarding at the at the beginning novice level and the highest levels of performance but that said Nobody in the in the in the Tokyo Summer Olympics, I recall, like truly just no points, like, and like went through a routine with no points. Um, whereas with breaking here, dancing here, like that was really bad. I I almost wish that the judges had like just thrown her a bone of like two or three points of relatively speaking or that sort of thing just to for the sake of the sport but that would obviously also not help the sport either so i don't know in any case that's my olympic skateboarding and olympic sport thoughts i hope that for all of these newer sports um for new cross um all that sort of thing or bmx that future olympics will continue to incorporate some of these new sports and these fields which in the past people viewed as a menace as criminal as ought to be illegal as the people that the people who participate in these sports are locked should be locked up that the people in these who participate in these sports aren't demonstrating athletic ability have 
aren't demonstrating athletic ability or our layabouts or that sort of thing, that the that, that the doubters of these sports through their incorporation in the Olympic Games will be proven wrong. And with that, we get to see more Olympic sports, more of this, like more support for these sport, sports in the larger environment. I want to see I basically I would like to see skateboard parks be just as common as baseball diamonds and tennis courts. I like to see um more support for BMX. Um my hope would be that for breakdancing, that people engaging in breakdancing aren't viewed as like like odd or strange, but are but they're their art is recognized as it is, as a art and one that requires tremendous tremendous athletic ability. Now, admittedly, to a degree, perhaps the Olympics is not the best venue for that, but on the other hand, I don't know how well like you would incorporate breakdancing into the larger world of art and dance that um in that same way. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 